Good morning to all from the editorial board of BuildUp Portal. For the ones who are attending a BuildUp webinar for the first time, welcome. For our returning audience, thank you for renovating your interest. It is a pleasure to host today's webinar entitled Five European Projects with its innovative ICT solutions for energy savings in the spotlight, which is organized in collaboration with the coordinators of five European funded projects, MobiStyle, utility, e-teacher, feedback, and in between. I would like to invite you all to contribute and participate in this webinar. You can ask questions by typing in the box on the right side of the screen. They will be answered at the end, after the presentations. You can also contribute to BuildUp portal. BuildUp is a collaborative platform in the field of energy efficiency in buildings. It is continuously updated and it represents one of the key sources of information on the topic of energy efficiency. You can register and become a member of the community and you can also upload news, events, present a case study, results from a project and so on. I would like to invite you all to navigate the portal. In the Learn section, you will find all the podcasts of the past webinars, so it is possible to listen to all the previous presentations. Each month, BuildUp selects a topic of the month to encourage the community to focus on one specific topic, and we publish at least an overview article about it. For example, the topic of the month of January is dig digitalization of the building and construction sector. And this is where we are hosting today's webinar. Now, I would like to present the agenda and introduce its speakers. First, Anna Tisov, MobiStyle Project Coordinator from Huygen Engineers and Consultants, will present the project's concepts of combining information related to energy, indoor environmental quality, and personal well-being, and will also present the solutions developed so far. Then, Angelina Katsifaraki from Hypertech Energy Labs and Project Manager of Utility Project will present the framework of utility ICT solution and the achieved results so far. The third presentation will be made by Gloria Calleja from Semosa and Technical Manager and Coordinator of the eTeacher Project. She will present eTeacher concepts and solutions on processing information from buildings and users, integrating behavioral change techniques and providing tailored advices to save energy and optimize indoor environmental quality. Then, uh, Patricia Valle, Communication Assistant for Feedback from the Institute for System and Computer Engineering, Technology and Science, will introduce Feedback Project, its concepts and solutions. Uh, then Federica Fuligni, Administrative Project Coordinator for In Between and from Arena Consulting, will present In Between concept and solutions deployed at residential and public buildings to enhance energy savings by promoting behavioral change. Together with Federica, Marco Batic, Technical Coordinator for In Between Project and from the Institute of Mihailo Pupin, we present developed energy services and the corresponding graphical user interface of the in-between cloud platform. So now I would like to leave the floor to Anna Tisov. So please, Anna, we can start the session. Thank you, Julia. So uh, hello in the name of the MobiStyle project. Um, so today, as mentioned, I will present our project but before telling you why and what we do in MobiStyle, I would just like to show you on uh, why we should shift our focus from the building technologies and optimization of the buildings to also those for whom the buildings are designed for, so for its user, for people. Mm. Okay. Um, so recently, I read the headline, we know less about the buildings in which we spend most of our time than we know about the cornflakes we had for breakfast or coat we wore this morning. I think this is a really interesting sentence and um, something that we can all reflect to or connect to. So why do we more know about the content, about the breakfast we had this morning or the coat we are wearing? How did we know so little about the buildings which we occupy 90% of our times? And how do we know how our behavior affects the indoor climate, the building's energy consumption, and vice versa? This is where the MobiStyle project comes in. 
So the main idea of Movistal is to increase awareness of building occupants. And how do we do that? It's about motivating end users' behavior change by combined ICT-based tools uh, and modular information services uh, with information on buildings' energy use, indoor environment, health, and lifestyle. The project started in October 2016, and it's ending this year. And in today's presentation, I will focus in this last fail phase of Mobistyle uh, about the current results, the developed tools, as also about the impact. Um, so just briefly, what are the project objectives? So the main objective is to reach an energy saving of 16% in different types of buildings. And how do we do that? As mentioned, we are using the measured data in buildings from different um, systems and sensors and transforming this into understandable information for the different user profiles. Um, and what we want to achieve is really this long-term behavioral change, raised awareness uh, that we can achieve, achieve by easy to use ICT-based uh, tools, which makes energy monitoring a well-accepted and attractive daily routine. Um, so, as mentioned, we are deploying the solutions in different demonstration sites, which cover both residential and as non-residential buildings, as also different type of users. Um, all, also now in the last phase, we are really looking into exploitation of our concept of our ICT solutions and therefore develop new business models and applications. Um, as today, I will just focus on presentation of solutions and uh, the impact so far, whereas I invite you to visit our website and look at the past uh, published deliverables, uh, where it's more information on the developed Mobistyle methodology and people-centric approach that has been integrated uh, in our solutions. Furthermore, I recommend you also watching our previous build-up webinar where we introduced and focused more on the methodological approach. Um, and therefore, this uh, webinar is about the ICT tools presentation. So as mentioned, uh, we are focusing on the demonstration sites, where instead of just looking into the buildings, we also are looking into who are actually our users. So this was our basis uh, to identify our user needs and user requirements. And this is where we have occupants in social housing uh, association in Denmark. Then we have smart homes in Wroclaw. Then we have staff from university buildings in Ljubljana. Then we have hotel guests and hotel staff in a hotel in Turin, Italy. And then we have um, office employees in two office environments in the Netherlands. Uh, here is just a brief graphical representation scheme of our Movistyle ICT-based tools, so based on the needs and requirements of building occupants and uh, buildings. Uh, we defined which parameters we should uh, measure in order to provide sufficient information and interesting information to user. And this data is then gathered in a, a single Movistyle database and then through different data analytics and algorithms the information is given back to the user via different attractive ICT tools, uh, game, dashboard, office app, as also for building manager, we have an expert tool. Um, uh, so first about Mobistyle game. Uh, so this is a mobile application uh, that is intended for homes. And uh, here what we are using is a nudging um, yeah, nudging behavior theory, uh, where we are combining the data from energy and indoor environmental quality uh, sensors and giving also based on this uh, some health tips to the occupants. We are measuring the actions done by user and this uh, gets back into the system so we can follow up uh, occupants' performance, where, whether they uh, did the actions we recommended them to do and whether this led to improve energy consumption as indoor environmental quality in buildings. Uh, this um, application is tested in a residential environment in Denmark and in Poland, so social housing as smart homes. Uh, the second uh, application we developed is a Movistyle dashboard. 
which is a tool for um, buildings energy and indoor environmental quality monitoring with suggestions uh, to guide users towards a more energy efficient behavior. Um, here we can show different energy types of usage in their environmental quality in a more easy to understand and comprehensible way than compared to sophisticated dashboards. And um, information can be disclosed via just simple data monitoring or historical trend analysis, special widgets or ad hoc uh, suggestions. And this application is tested in two non-residential cases in university offices in Ljubljana and uh, the hotel environment in Turin in Italy. Then the third application is Mobistyle Office app. Uh, this one is introducing dynamic indoor environment in order to increase occupants acceptance with such dynamic temperatures indoors which can not only lead to energy savings, but uh, what we are also testing is how this leads to healthier and more productive environment for employees. <clears throat> uh, it also provides tips and information on how such conditions affect people's uh, well-being and uh, buildings energy use. And we are also gathering back the feedback from uh, users. This is tested in the office environment in the Netherlands. And um, last tool, which is tested in all the demonstration cases, is the expert tool, which allows, is basically intended for experts and building management managers, and it allows harmonized management of different data types, as also offers easy to visualize features. And uh, here, it allows building managers to filter information, make simple calculation, and export the data in the most suitable way. Um, here, um, the experts can be calculating some predefined KPIs or they are also able to set up their own KPIs. Um, as I already mentioned in the uh, introduction of one of the previous tools, what we are realizing in MovieStyle is also that people want more than just an energy bill and that energy efficiency is not really interesting for them. Therefore, what we state in MovieStyle is that uh, health is today's wealth. And this is also something we are prioritizing, that people today don't want to have a Rolex, but everyone is already wearing a Apple smartwatch. And in that way, uh, in Mobistyle, we are really looking beyond the stable temperature cinders that are um, recommended by uh, current European standards. Um, and here, what we are looking more is um, how people are perceiving dynamic conditions. So instead of saying that we should have 22 degrees in winter all the time, we are introducing lower temperatures in the mor morning and then slowly building up. And uh, what our partner in the project, uh, Maastricht University, showed that such uh, exposure to mild cold, what we call temperature training, can le lead to energy um, metabolism increase, as also to resilient to cardiovascular diseases, uh, and resilience to thermal discomfort due to acclima acclimation. Um, so as mentioned, with the ICT tools, we are also further increasing the acceptance of users with those dynamic conditions. We are telling him, them on uh, how this affects their uh, health, their productivity, their indoor environment, and of course also how this leads in the end to energy savings. So we are looking at both physiological response of the body as psychological response. So as mentioned, our main goal is the reduction of energy consumption. However, beside this, beside the energy consumption reduction, we are also looking at uh, improving the thermal comfort as also reduction of CO2 emissions. Um, as mentioned, we are also, um, or we already developed business models and exploitation routes for our solutions. And here we are working closely with our Mobistyle Consumers Advisory Board, so with different commercial companies that are now um, working on the market and are interested to exploit and bring further our solutions. So if there is someone in the audience today that would, would be interested in the business exploitation of our solution, more than, uh, yeah, more than welcome to talk with us afterwards. In the end, the last impact we are looking is also about documenting which particular measures we're introducing 
um, to which extent those affect both the energy consumption as um, personal health and well-being. And what we are trying to understand is also not only how, but also why people's behavior leads to energy consumption and make this um, visualized to users, to those yeah, that uh, buildings are designed for. Uh, in the end, I would just like to emphasize that Mobistar solutions should not be seen as standalone tools, but they're part of the community building and people should feel part of the Mobistar uh, story and share their experience. And here, uh, to get an impression of the Mobistar impact, I would like to invite you to see our video that you can then see uh, afterwards when presentations will be shared with you. And again, I would like to welcome you if you want to know more to look out at our website, subscribe to our newsletter, look at our public deliverables as, again, if you're interested in the exploitation and getting more in-depth insights in our technical solution as a mobile exploitation paths, please uh, send your request either to me or our ambassador, uh, Andrei Litiu. And uh, the next WebEx meeting, a closed meeting with our advisory board will be already held on the 3rd February, where we will uh, share more information about the Movistal Office app. And then in the weeks after, uh, the meetings related to other ICT tools will follow. Uh, for now, I would like to say thank you, and I'm open for questions uh, yeah, during the Q&A session. Thank you. Um, hi, hello. Um, I am Angelina Katsvaraki. I'm here to present the utility project. Um, so I will start um, directly with the motivation behind this project. And um, yeah, I, I have some trouble changing the slide. Thank you. So um, as you all know, um, the European Union utilities are going um, through this energy transition phase currently and there have been many changes um, in the business landscape so there have been um, uh, many users moving towards um, being consumers to becoming prosumers so they are becoming less grid dependent and as they they are um, they, they uh, have access to a huge amount of data now. Uh, even the solutions they require, um, they, they are becoming different. They want more energy efficiency and they want access to smart devices and um, applications. They can control remotely and uh, know how everything is working at their premises. And this basically, requires that European utilities change from being traditional uh, energy retailers to becoming solution providers. So um, to address this, the utility project is proposing a solution based on um, change of um, energy consumption behavior of the end users that um, addresses both utilities and end customers. So um, the overall solution is based on a three-step approach um, where um, the three stages are unfreeze, change and refreeze. What does that mean? So unfreeze um, is the, the point where the users become aware of their energy wasteful activities and habits. So uh, mainly the framework is um, creating the, the context to present these habits and quantify this energy waste to the end users to raise awareness and motivate them. Then uh, during the change phase, a more energy efficient and sustainable behaviors are proposed to the users through continuous feedback and meaningful triggering in order um, to promote um, 
more sustainable behaviors and slowly moving towards the refreeze phase where these behaviors are um, slowly become a new habit and they are established um, for, for the end customers. So if we want to have a, a full technical overview of the utility solution, we can um, imagine it as a four layer um, functionality starting from the lower level. Um, this is the IoT uh, equipment, which means all the smart devices, meters uh, and sensors installed locally at the premises of the end customers in order to continuously monitor um, the, the processes going on locally and collect uh, information and also allow remote control of uh, the most um, energy consuming devices. Then um, at the back end components of the solution, we have the data management layer at the lowest part, where is, um, that is the part where all the information, the raw data collected is being managed and cleansed and stored. And it's where all the privacy and data protection considerations uh, imposed by the GDPR regulations are taken into account and the constant communication between the cloud and the end users is maintained. Then um, the internal core service um, layer is where all this raw data becomes uh, meaningful information, where all this information collected is being treated in order to extract personalized profiles of the end users, in order to identify and quantify energy wastes and also to allow um, monitoring the building performance, rating it and um, extract meaningful analytics out of that uh, raw data. Finally, the, at the upper part, we have uh, the end user applications that can address the end customers and also the, the utilities. And uh, these applications are made uh, in the case of the customers to enhance the engagement and awareness to provide feedback and give an overview into the basic processes at the customer's premises and for the case of the utility to allow the monitoring of the uh, different assets and provide insights about the entire portfolio and also allows um, the construction of different business scenarios and uh, their comparison and um, um, an insight to the results of these um, different scenarios. So um, I will very quickly go through some snapshots from the end user applications. They have recently been deployed to all end users of the utility project. So there are no, um, no results available yet, but um, there will be hopefully very soon. So I just picked some uh, screens of the menu just to convey the basic functionalities offered. In the case of the energy retailers, the utilities, the ESCOs and so, um, there is a, the possibility of performance analytics for the different assets in the entire portfolio, also comparative analysis and ratings, uh, but also there is a possibility of monitoring the independent um, installations and the health of uh, the installed devices and also a uh, campaign management uh, interface that allows the construction of different campaigns, the uh, implementation of these campaigns and also afterwards the evaluation of their outcomes. In the case of the end user there are similar interfaces uh, again offering performance analytics and historical data visualization for the premises of the end users, uh, performance ratings, but additionally there are um, functionalities allowing the remote control and scheduling of uh, the different devices uh, that can be controlled depending on the uh, equipment installed at the end user premises. There is the personalized notification 
board that allows not only the receival of personalized notifications but also uh, creates an inventory of folder messages received and an energy clock breaking down the consumption throughout the 24-hour uh, period of a day in order to identify the hours of highest consumption and uh, give an extra motivation and information to the end user to understand um, their consumption. So um, really quick about the value proposition of the solution. So we can see it from three different perspectives depending on the on the customer's address. In the case of end customers, there is um, the B2B approach. So when um, companies are addressed and they also want to look at um, the the premises as um, from a building management point of view, then there is the B2C approach, mainly addressing residential users, and then the approach addressing the utilities. So in the first case for the B2B approach, uh, energy efficiency is to be offered as well as energy bill reduction, and of course, optimization of energy performance. Um, that can be done for the overall building or independent um, spaces, depending on their use. Uh, in case of public buildings, um, to help the building managers to meet the legal obligations and uh, have an overview over the entire consumption of the building. And finally, to improve the overall indoor conditions, which reflects to the health and well-being of uh, the employees. Um, for the B2C approach, um, there, is, there are similar um, advantages as far as energy bills and efficiency is concerned and an additional functionality for smart homes giving different um, levels of functionality referring to comfort, to efficiency and to safety through automations. Finally, for the utilities, um, the project offers uh, a, a modular uh, solution, an energy as a service model, and allows the creation of different uh, value propositions depending on the preferences of the target group, uh, such as um, easiness of use and lifestyle and so. Um, then it allows the utilities to find new users and to uh, maintain the old ones and open up to new uh, target groups such as young customers and so. Um, also, it allows the exploration of new business models. So uh, about the validation approach followed, the, the project will be validated against three pillars. Um, which, is, which are specifically the energy efficiency, the user acceptance, and the degree of automation. So uh, uh, the optimal trade-off between these three, so what is the maximum energy efficiency to be achieved, uh, how it, that will reflect on the user preferences, and uh, how much automation is necessary for that uh, will be um, evaluated through two different aspects. So uh, the building intelligence level, which refers to the amount of equipment necessary to be installed at the end user premises to achieve the optima, optimal result, and the level of service referring to the sophistication of the offered services to the end users necessary. Um, at the moment, the project is demonstrated in five uh, demonstration sites all over Europe, um, Germany, France, Spain, Poland and Greece in collaboration with um, um, five utilities and ESCOs in Europe and um, both commercial and residential buildings in this case. And about the business models which are quite a few to mention right now uh, due to the tight time schedule all the different um, energy uh, businesses involved they have uh, selected their own business models depending on their uh, interests and um, um, targets for this specific project at the moment 
So before closing, I would like to say a couple of things about the utility team. The utility team um, comes uh, consists from partners from eight different European Union countries, five of uh, which are energy retailers, as shown in the previous slide. Um, three of them being solution and technology providers, and three being large research institutions and service providers in Europe. So thank you very much for your attention and um, I am open to any questions you might have. Feel free to visit the utility website or our social media campaigns. Thank you. Hello, uh, I am Gloria Calleja and I'm going to talk about e-teacher project. First of all, I will introduce the project, then I will provide an overview uh, on all our empowered tools and then I will focus on e-teacher app, which is what the building users can see and where somehow all the tools have been integrated. And there I will talk about the energy tools and the comfort tools. So the objective of our project is to change energy behavior of building users towards energy efficiency. For that purpose, we have developed a number of ICT solutions. They collect real-time information from the building and the users, then they process uh, the data with cloud services focus on energy and comfort. And finally, they propose behavior changes with tailored recommendations. Uh, our solution has a user-oriented design. That means that we have carried out uh, social studies to identify requirements. Uh, during the implementation phase, we have done a, a number of users' consultancy to collect their feedback and integrate in our tools. And we are also doing some user training to, to be sure that our tools uh, are accepted uh, by, the, by the users and it's easy to use for them. Uh, the solution also integrates engagement techniques related to energy visibility, energy literacy and gamification. Uh, here you can see an overview of our tools. We have four layers. In the third layer, we have the input layer. Uh, I will I will further explain later. The second layer is the communication layer where we have our UPC. And this the third layer is the analysis layer we have where we have our uh, web services that process the data. And finally, we have the user interface layer where we have our app. Uh, which is uh, uh, what the user actually can see. Um, as input, we collect monitoring data from the building and also from the rooms at building level and at room or apartment level. We collect outdoor conditions like temperature, CO2, rel relative humidity and solar radiation. We also collect indoor conditions, temperature, CO2, relative humidity or lighting level. We collect energy consumption at building and room level, uh, can, uh, use for lighting, HVAC and appliances. And we also uh, monitor some other uh, data uh, such as presence and windows opening. Uh, we Another kind of inputs that we collect is the, is the comfort feedback. For that purpose, we ask uh, users uh, if they are satisfied with the indoor conditions of the building, and we ask also why. So these are the inputs that we collect. Then we, with our, in our communication layer, we collect and store uh, the monitoring data from the buildings and facilities. <laughs> in, the, in the next layer, we have uh, another tool, which is the what if analysis. Uh, what if analysis is a cloud service that analyzes the monitoring data and identify energy conservation measures. We have also another uh, uh, a web service which is metrics. 
that process uh, inputs, inputs from sensors uh, and transform them into KPIs on indoor conditions by comparing actual measurements with, uh, with targets. Another uh, cloud service is uh, Pulse. Pulse is a digital service that combines end user feedback on indoor uh, environmental quality and monitoring data into one wellness score and our app uh, that helps users to save energy by providing recommendations on, on, on their energy behavior. And it integrates uh, not just energy, but also comfort tools. Uh, from now on, I will, I will focus on our app, as I said. Uh, a teacher app is available in Google Play or and in Apple Store. You can download and install in a mobile phone like all the all the apps that uh, someone can have in the mobile phone. Uh, you need to be registered and to do login. Uh, here is a screenshot of the of this um, page. The first thing uh, that you have to do when you have a teacher app is uh, the, the screen is white. You don't have any location, any room or, um, or building. So the first thing that you have to do is to click this plus button and scan the QR code. Uh, every room and, and building has a, a QR code associated. And when you uh, scan that QR code, all the information related with that room uh, is uh, upload in your mobile phone and uh, you can receive recommendation or, or see monitoring data uh, related to that uh, room. When you click in the room, you can scan one or two rooms or uh, the rooms that the number of rooms that you want to use or you usually use. And when, when you click that room, then you have access to all the menu uh, in the app that I will introduce uh, in the next slides. So the energy tools in the app are recommendation. We provide, uh, it displays message to help users re reducing the energy consumption and save energy. I will show an example later on. We also have another tool which is ranking where the users are ranked, they can compete. And if you follow a recommendation provided by the system, you get uh, points and a better posi position in the, in the ranking. We also have uh, another tool that uh, show the CO2 savings. It's a teacher tree that show how much CO2 you save following the recommendations. We have also an energy consumption tool where you can see your consumption at room or at building level uh, in terms of lighting, heating, cooling, or total energy consumption. You also can see your energy distribution. This is uh, how you have used your energy uh, and uh, the energy saving. This tool compared your energy consumption last week or last month with this with your energy consumption this week. Or this one uh, depends what you select. Here in this uh, screen, uh, I have uh, shown some of these tools. Uh, so the first one is recommendation. Uh, you receive me message, for, for example, here you see safe heating energy. If you reduce the thermostat temperature by one degree um, and it, it calculates how much energy you can save. These recommendations uh, are uh, based on the monitoring data uh, and it also provides hints which are more general recommendations. Then in the second picture you can see the ranking which uh, integrates some gamification uh, issues and here you see uh, a uh, ranking of users and you get points when you follow this recommendation. Those points depends uh, on the amount of energy associated with the recommendation that you have uh, carried out. And uh, so you can uh, increase your level in the rank. 
in the in the last picture you can see another tool which is the energy consumption that shows uh, all your consumption uh, lighting cooling heating appliance, appliances and total you can select the dates and see the, the energy consumption in, in the dates that you want and these are some of the energy tools that that we have in the app regarding comfort we have uh, uh, four tools your comfort opinion here the users can uh, give their feedback on comfort pressing a, a smile or a sad uh, face and they can also leave comments uh, to, to, sh to give more information to the facility manager, what is, where is the problem. We have also a virtual building where we can visualize the monitoring data on indoor conditions. Uh, we have metrics that gather the monitoring data and translate it into performance indi indicators. Uh, and these indicators can be used to, to improve the comfort conditions and pools uh, that show a score of the indoor condition based on the comfort feedback of the users and also on the monitoring data. I will show two of these tools. Um, this is, uh, these are the screen of, of uh, one of the tools, which is your comfort opinion. First of all, the users see this question. Are, are you satisfied with the indoor condition of the building? And they can click on the green or red face. Then uh, they can say why. Uh, for example, here, uh, the user is, is, is saying that the temperature is too cold. And finally, you can agree with other comments from other users, even the facility manager can leave a message for for example here um, is saying okay i will check the temperature the last tool that i wanted to explain is the comfort uh, is the virtual building here we can see uh, very friendly uh, the temperatures of the, uh, the of the different rooms um, uh, according, we, they are colored according to the to the temperature, so it's easy to say to know if it is one room is too warm or uh, one or the conditions in in another room are are quite quite good. Uh, you can select temperature, humidity, or carbon dioxide, um, and it's a very visual tool. Um, this is all I wanted to present today. So thank you very much for your attention and for your interest in the, in the project. I encourage you to visit our website uh, if you want more information about the project. Hello, this is Patricia. I'm working as the responsible for the communication and dissemination of feedback project. I'm happy to say that this project's objectives are not so different as from others already presented here, what means that we are together promoting energy efficiency. So this presentation is mainly focused on the distinctive features of our solution, for example, uh, the storytelling. This project started in November 2017 and will come to an end on October this year. At the moment, we are testing the ICT platform in two demo areas in Porto and Germany. And in a couple of weeks, uh, it will be ter the turn of Spain demonstrator to test it in El Prat municipality in Barcelona. And how will we encourage behavior changes? through EcoPlay. Um, it is a mobile app that is promoting intrinsic motivation, providing users confidence and autonomy so that they can act toward energy savings by, by themselves. Um, therefore, the app uses 
um, give users feedback regarding uh, the energy consumption of their team and we try to engage them individually through gamification techniques uh, supported by a set of tools that we call uh, feedback suite uh, that I'm going to present to you at uh, the end of this presentation. Um, electricity consumption is measured by meters. However, in order to promote a behavioral change and to be maintained over the long term, we need to ensure that these energy savings do not compromise the comfort. And for this reason, uh, in Eshtec, the coordinators of the project, uh, have developed a multi-sensor capable of monitoring the levels of temperature, luminosity, humidity and CO2. Through graphics and messages, we give feedback to the teams in order for them to get to know how to adapt their behaviours. At the individual level and in order to encourage the use of the application, we have awarded prizes, points and badges. Prizes are physical rewards attributed, sorry, are physical rewards, let's say, attributed by the demo, um, the demo leaders to the best players or of the month or of the week. On the other hand, and virtually, users can earn points as well as bronze, silver or gold badges. And this reward system is offered over three levels of the, of the competition. And here storytelling comes to the stage. The first weeks of the competition aim at providing uh, learning tools on how to save energy through Mr. C videos and games. And let me give you some glimpses of this. So, Mr. C has a twin brother, his name is Claude, and unlike him, he doesn't have energy efficient behaviors. So, through these funny videos, users can get some guidelines um, that are going to be tested in quizzes. The second phase or level of this competition involves interactive games like quizzes and other challenges. Um, and have as objective to consolidate knowledge. The last uh, and the final level already presupposes some knowledge about energy efficiency, but it's also the most engaging level. I'm not the best, the best person to say this, of course, but I think that after uh, you have a look at the first episode, it's impossible to not try the second one. So, Mr. C returns here, but involved in a plot. Um, it's like a soap opera full of mysteries and some drama. All communication with the user is done in an integrated and coherent way. And, for example, besides uh, the text messages that EchoPlay releases, during this last level, uh, messages are spoken by the characters, the series down characters. So these images um, are just some examples. Here we have uh, Mr. C, we have the Joseph, uh, that is a Portuguese character, and on the right we have the Spanish girl. So there is a connection between the characters and the demo users, users also. Uh, so this is, let's say, the pretty face of uh, EchoPlay. However, there is much more behind it. As I told you before, in the beginning of this presentation, there is a set of tools which work in order to offer the user the relevant and accurate content. And this set of tools can be also on Dexcel, that, that is a platform from Dexma, a partner from the project, um, or locally on the service of, of other partners. What Dexcel does is to collect data from meters and sensors, interpret it and offer a graphic representation communicating with the gamification platform. And there are also other tools such as the profile and segmentation app, which although not integrated in Dexcel, allows users to receive personalized messages according to their profile, um, as a utility project does. For example. Finally, 
Uh, this graphic was obtained from the Behavior Predictor app based on the history of previous behaviors or events, such as the room occupancy, energy saving opportunities are for guests. So EcoPlay sends messages to the users one hour beforehand, telling them whether or not they can take advantage of that moment to win prizes, coins, um, and points, and whatever. And that's it. So there is much more to know about our project. 10 minutes is not enough at all, but you can learn more through our website and social networks. Um, and feel free to make questions at the end of this presentation or send us an email. It's up to you. Thank you. Hello, good morning everyone. Here is Federica Fulini speaking from Nima Consulting. Uh, I am the project coordinator of the project, mainly uh, with administrative roles as we uh, have the presence here today also of the project technical coordinator Marco Batic, which will go more in detail later uh, on, the, uh, on the app development that we did in, the, in between. So the acronym of the name is actually ICT Enabled Behavioral Change Towards Energy Efficient Lifestyle. But as you see here in the slide, the assisting, uh, the, our, um, what the project really talk about is assisting people to identify their energy waste and uh, learn how they can conserve the energy. So what the project does is mainly identify the energy waste that mainly residential buildings, uh, learn how they can conserve the energy and motivate them to act, to, to get some energy savings actually visible for them. Uh, in fact, the project also includes some parts from the theory of social practice. So it's not purely engineering project, but it also has really uh, a big social science component. Um, I cannot move the slide. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then, so the um, what uh, what are the project characteristics and the challenges we want we are facing? Uh, as you said, uh, we are similar to the other projects that were presented before. We are now the last one on, on, this, uh, on this line. Uh, so it's the same uh, type of project in terms of challenges and, uh, and developments. But uh, we have also some specific uh, challenges. For example, um, the challenges that we faced was the low monetary benefits for the individuals, as the ener um, energy bills are not uh, so important for most of people. Uh, or so critical in their budget. There is also a low capability to change the energy demand pattern and then the user practices. And uh, also, um, just, just a second, okay. And also there is a lack of global conscience related to the impact of the energy generation. And this is a, is a tendency to perceive the individual consumption as insignificance in the view of climate change. Uh, the complexity of the existing ICT platforms is also really a critical topic. So we try to make it as simple as possible, and I think with a great, uh, uh, great results. And this is what Mark will present in a while. Uh, also, as, as the other projects that were presented before, our project started in November 2017, so it's uh, um, is two years and some months old. Is a, a three years project, so we are really in the last year of the project, which is a very challenging year, we can say. Uh, we have to get uh, really um, high level impacts and results. Uh, the project is going on very well, so uh, I can also mention briefly some of our um, consortium pattern. If I can just move one more slide. Thank you very much. Um, so our consortium is actually a small one. It's made of eight partners, but we are from seven different countries. So we are from Italy, Spain, France, Austria, Israel, Serbia, and Denmark. And our demo sites are mainly located in the Central European. So we have demo sites in France and Austria. Um, what we have in France are mainly social housing, uh, residential buildings. So, and what we have in Austria are both residential as commercial buildings, uh, tertiary buildings. Uh, so residential, we have single family houses. That's also interesting because we, uh, we can get feedback from different social classes. And also we have schools and other public buildings. And this has made the, pro the project also very challenging and very interesting for having to develop the app, which taking into consideration also different uh, uh, categories of people. Some of them don't have um, Android phones. Some of them prefer to use the um, uh, web application, so the laptop. Some of them don't have a smartphone. So it's it's very challenging and interesting. And uh, 
uh, we our aim was to develop a cost effective solution a cost effective solution with good add value and uh, and without to avoiding disruption in the everyday activities so without uh, having the end user changing their their daily lives and i would like now to introduce you to marco batic which is the technical coordinator of the project from the mialo pupin institute and he will take on explaining you better the details thank you very much So good afternoon from my side, my name is Marco and I will try to reveal more details about the in-between platform and the application that we have developed so far. Uh, let me try to scroll down, okay. So first of all, I would like to say a, a couple of words about the, the platform itself. So what was the idea? The main focus of in-between platform is to basically empower existing home automation systems, existing building management systems with innovative energy management services. So in that sense, we have provided integration with the legacy systems and uh, or some new Internet of Things or IoT based uh, home automation systems. And for that purpose, we have developed a, a technology agnostic platform in the sense that we have developed a gateway that is capable of integrating uh, low-level devices from different vendors and I will show you a little bit later more about it. So the second point is the actual integration of the home automation and the energy services which is made through our cloud-based platform and the third most important thing is that we have developed different applications for the end users. So we have developed as uh, Federica just mentioned uh, we have developed uh, both uh, a web application and mobile application depending on the end users that we are targeting. So you can already imagine that we have targeted the mobile application for our residential end users, while the web application is being used by uh, energy managers or people responsible of, uh, let's say, operating larger areas uh, and complexes or entire buildings. So. Uh, Following to the actual infrastructure and the platform that has been developed in this project, we have delivered uh, some innovative energy management services, among which you can see the four main or the four most important services that we have developed. First one is called the consumption analytics service. It's basically the service that is dealing with the non-intrusive load monitoring. This is a very important service. It's a, a machine learning based service that allows us basically to uh, make analytics of the consumption in the sense that we can use data only from a smart meter to actually try to disaggregate the loads into uh, specific appliances within the house. So this was very important because it allowed us to have different, let's say, uh, business uh, appliances evolved in the sense that we do not require always uh, a very detailed uh, monitoring of the house. Second, we have developed the real-time home monitoring and notification service. This is a rule-based uh, service that allows us to, to track any possibility for energy conservation against the ambient monitoring and the actual rules that we have set up. So you can consider this service as a very suitable one to deliver tailored energy conservation measures, such as for example, that you have a window open, that you have the heating on in this particular room and that you should either uh, turn off the heating or close the window and, and things like that. You will later see how it looks like from the interface itself. The third aspect is the appliance scheduling, which we also call and refer to demand optimization service, which allows end users actually to do some ahead planning of the working hours of their appliances and also to allow our in-between service to do the optimization and rescheduling of these devices. Of course, any rescheduling does not happen automatically, but also requires a user in the loop, which means that we provide a proposition of the rescheduling and then the end user is the one who actually makes the final decision whether to, to accept this new schedule. Finally, we have developed the energy efficiency performance evaluation benchmarking service. The idea of this service was actually to try to calculate something that we call energy efficiency performance, which is not really uh, only energy consumption, but it's actually normalized energy consumption. 
which allows us to make a fair comparison among users because you can have in one apartment a, a, a family with uh, two or three children in another apartment you can have a, a single person living so you cannot really compare their consumption in order to make a fair comparison who is more efficient so all these things has been taken into account and we have developed this benchmarking service to try to induce some kind of social pressure in the sense that uh, by ranking them and uh, by calculating this fair energy performance we will induce the behavioral change with the user which is of course one of the main topics of the of the project so following is actually a couple of slides which are related to the mobile application itself that we have developed of course more detailed about each of those services you can find in our public deliverables but i will just now guide you through some uh, let's say interesting uh, screens from the mobile app and also try to suggest what are the main features that we offer through through the, our app so as uh, as uh, already here heard from the previous projects you can also uh, download this app from the google play of course but you need the account with the inbitfield platform and uh, we have already called it this uh, uh, application sam which stands for the smart energy manager and basically it offers uh, some uh, let's say uh, core uh, features in the in, in the app itself so first screen is devoted to the sensing and energy management we will see later on how it looks like the second is devoted to the real-time notification center which is intended to have user tailored notifications regarding the energy conservation the third part is related to energy performance and benchmarking uh, following by the energy efficiency tips repository which is basically just some a very generic uh, energy efficiency measures and then of course you have also the weather forecast which is somewhat interesting to uh, to users to be part of this application so starting with the sensing and energy management this part is devoted to presenting the measurements from all the sensors that uh, have been collected to the platform and as said before the idea was to have it uh, vendor agnostic so we tried to develop a uh, highly interoperable solution which does not care whether you use uh, Danfoss heat meters or you or, or you use the Velcro sensor for for measuring the consumption and so on so you can uh, here uh, see that we have already integrated the uh, smart meter measurements the heat meter measurements but also various sorts of ambient uh, measurements like motion light temperature the air quality and so on also uh, the users are able to access the actuators that are found in place and for this purpose in our demo sites we have already deployed the smart plugs and the smart cables both of which are basically uh, both sensors and actuators at the same time which allows us to have remote uh, operation of the devices finally we have also deployed the smart thermostats as well which are also we can also be remotely uh, operated in terms of defining different set points you can see a piece of interface which is actually devoted to this part here following is the part relating to the consumption analytics and the, the artificial intelligence model that we have developed now uh, the it's called the non-intrusive load monitoring and you can see here in a piece of interface this is part of let's say a sensing and the monitoring part of the application which basically gives you the estimation of the appliance of each appliance within the apartment only by looking at the smart meter data found at the entrance of the apartment so we don't need any additional monitoring we only need the smart meter data from the apartment to be able to to assess and to estimate whether a washing machine is working or the boiler or the heating is working and so on also as i mentioned before we have associated with each of these devices we have associated appliance scheduling and uh, basically you're allowed to have weekly schedules with unlimited number of intervals basically this is very important because our end users are then able to do some remote and they had planning and basically weekly uh, uh, had planning but again it has our in-between services to actually provide some optimized schedule for uh, each of those appliances as said, end users can accept or completely disregard this recommendation and then proceed on their own. The third part, uh, as I said, was related to the real-time notification center, which actually proved to be very important for our users because it 
not only gives real-time notification about the energy conservation measures which are available in the, for the specific apartment, but also it provides information about health issues and security issues. Just to give you some examples how it uh, looks like, the energy conservation I already mentioned, it actually detects whether the windows are open and the heating is on in the same room. And it's very important that we have developed the ontology-based repository, knowledge repository about each of the apartments on our demo sites. So we know exactly where each sensor is deployed in which room. So we can really associate a specific sensor of window with a specific heater in that room. And that's very important to provide uh, very tailored and user-specific uh, recommendations. But also, as I said, we can also issue some uh, health alarms. For example, you remember that we, we, we monitor the VOC, the volatile organic compound, and basically the air quality. So we can also detect uh, whether the air quality has deteriorated to some uh, uh, very dangerous thresholds. But also we can have security uh, alarms. For example, if we notice that uh, the window is open, but there is no occupancy, so that means that you should also consider whether you have closed all the, all the windows and so on. What is very important that we uh, provide here, we do not only make the recommendation and the alarm to the end user, but we also provide the possibility to act upon this recommendation. So you can see here, if you can, if you receive an energy conservation uh, alarm saying that there is a, a window open and the heating on, you are already prompted with the possibility to turn off that specific heater in that specific room, which is very important for our end users and very comfortable for them to use. It. Of course, in some cases, when you do some energy waste intentionally, for example, if you want to leave the uh, window open to get some more fresh air and so on, you can always dismiss some notifications or in case for a specific uh, rule is not applicable for your case, you can disable even disable this uh, notification and you won't get disturbed anymore. This was something that we have uh, co-developed with our end users together as the rest of the, the uh, application. Now the mobile application has actually reached uh, its uh, third release, so we are constantly improving it with our end users uh, and uh, this has actually occurred for the last couple of months. Uh, sorry for this one. Uh, so finally, I would just like to mention a little bit more about the energy performance and benchmarking. And as I said, this part is especially important to induce this behavioral change and actually to create this kind of social pressure and competition among our end users by providing the normalized energy consumption. When we say normalize, again, we normalize the consumption according to the actual weather applicable to that uh, specific user, but also the occupancy, also heated area, and, and, uh, and etc. Uh, what is very important that we provide daily performance evaluation and we update these values daily and the user is available uh, to, to see this uh, ranking which is normally associated to a neighborhood. So we have uh, during the in-between project we have actually instantiated this benchmarking for the two demo sites. So currently we do not make uh, cross demo comparisons but only we make comparisons inside within a demo site which is which we feel is more appropriate because uh, there are different types of users in these demo sites. One is residential and non-residential, so it was actually more suitable to do it this way. So when it comes to the actual uh, figures in the in the project, uh, we have of course uh, committed ourselves to monitor the reduction of the final energy consumption. And uh, uh, we have already started noticing uh, some reductions. The final figures will are yet to be calculated be because we have deployed just recently the overall platform and the application. But uh, and I can already disclose some preliminary uh, results that basically uh, lots of our savings actually uh, come from the energy conservation measure module, which is this rule-based uh, notification system, which are maybe some uh, very low hanging fruits in terms of uh, all the computational power needed and so on. But then again, uh, those are actually some of the quick uh, wins that we were able to, to collect uh, already. Of course, the idea and the objective was also to, to uh, enable accelerated and wider deployment and adoption of user-friendly ICT solutions. As said, 
we developed a mobile application, but we have also developed a web application, which is uh, using basically responsive technology, meaning that it can be viewed also on mobile phones in quite uh, nice ways as well. And we are already tracking the number of end users changing their behavior. And we are proud to see that this number is increasing uh, on, on daily basis with, uh, with the release of the final version of the app itself. Of course, this has been a very short time to, to disclose all the, uh, all the features and even the technical details about the project. We can also review some key features of the project on our YouTube video, but you can also visit uh, several links on the social media, but I would also recommend highly to visit our website and also to go for all the public deliverables available. And of course, at any time, if you feel uh, the need to ask some further questions, uh, regardless of the level of technical details, please feel free to do so using one of our web uh, uh, contacts. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all your presentations. Uh, so now we have some questions from the audience. There are um, two general ones which are directed to all of you, all the projects. So let's start with the first one. Is there a possibility of sharing data and information between users? And if this is the case, how are all of them tackling security and GDPR issues? What was the first? Sorry, I did not get the first part of the question. Yeah, OK. So is there a possibility of sharing data and information between users? We are sharing correlated data, so not individuals data but the correlation of data via mobistel open users platform uh, but of course we are gdpr compliant within the ict tools and it, this depends on the features of each ict tool so as i showed um we have five tools so for each tool we have the technical features to be gdpr compliant as a feedback side we did a presentation to all users and we explained it how that um, how we collect data from users and all of them um, all of the users that are partic participating in our tests they signed a privacy policy document so uh, everything is in compliance with gdpr regulation team from in between project here is federica speaking we are also very much GDPR compliance and uh, the end users are all the time, um, they have a, a local contact which is from their nationality and is a consortium partner. And so they are really in touch with them and uh, they don't fear any any data loss or no problem in this sense. So in, in the case of a teacher, of course, we have our data management plan. The, the, the building user have signed consent forms and we are uh, we we have been checking that we are compliance of, of the other gdpr uh, uh, rules uh, and uh, regarding the users they cannot see um, data from one building to another one or from one room uh, to another one the only thing is uh, if they accept uh, uh, the, uh, in the ranking, um, they can decide whether they show their name and so, or just uh, an anonymized user in the ranking. But the monitoring data and all the data is not shared. All right. Um, Thank you. Hi. Uh, this, ah, okay. Yeah. May I, uh, you tell me. You tell me, please. Uh, Yes, this is Angelina from Utility Project. In our case, as mentioned before, uh, the Utility Project is also GDPR compliant as far as data collection um, is concerned and ICT tools. So um, all the data collected uh, is uh, encrypted and anonymized and the users have signed consent forms for everything and there is no possibility of uh, um, data uh, being shared, but in the rating functionalities of the tools, um, the users have an opportunity to uh, compare their performance against uh, anonymized aggregated performance of uh, users, uh, of other users of a similar 
ranking or so, uh, but uh, no direct beta sharing is possible. Yes, thank you for your for your answers. There is another question um, directed to everyone. Is there the possibility of scaling the solution from mainly in building environments to other scales like quarters or even cities? Is uh, is this in your radar pipeline? In case of Movistyle, of course, you were looking, looking how to scale up or um, how we would deploy Movistyle if there would be another case joining now the project. And this was also a big discussion on where is kind of the balance between providing really tailor-made solution as also a more um, generic solution that can be applied to other cases, to other buildings or on a bigger scale, as you mentioned, the city. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we would need another project to really test if it is applicable. We came now with a set of requirements for the new buildings, if they would want to adopt the Movistyle approach, what do they need to do as a pre-requirement before connecting to the Movistyle ICT uh, system? Um, but how is this in reality? We should do another yeah, st study. From feedback, we are testing our solution in different types of buildings. So it's our idea to exploit uh, our solution and try to to test it in different contexts also. Um, yeah, from the in-between project, uh, I think one of our main goals was to get a user engagement. So uh, we have to make sure first that the, the users, the end users, so the, mainly the residents, are very happy to use our platform and they, they don't have any problem. We are not uh, disrupting their daily routine. And we have to make sure first that they really like and accept our uh, app. And then, uh, of course, we aim to scale it. And uh, one of the impacts of our project is also to have a very high acceptance rate and uh, demonstration, a very high number of demonstration sites to use. But first, is is very important and very difficult to get the user engagement. So, in the case of a teacher, we want to demonstrate in 12 buildings, uh, and one of the things uh, we want to analyze during the demonstration phase is the scale up issue. Uh, I think at city level maybe is uh, is too much. We we would need um, I don't know if another project but more work. But yeah for sure it's one of the things that we want to evaluate during the demonstration phase. Um, in the case of utility, uh, we have already over 150 demonstration sites all over uh, Europe, including both commercial and residential. So um, we are quite confident about the scaling up potential of uh, the solution. However, uh, this is still uh, tested and we are uh, looking into all the possibilities in order to evaluate uh, even larger scale deployments of the solution. Okay, so thank you. Um, so there is a question directed to Anna about Mobistyle. For the ICT tool, what are the exploitation possibilities? Is it in a full working version already? Um, is it to some specific ICT tool? I mean, we uh, all... It's not specified, so... Yeah, because the game, I mean, the TRL is approximately the same, so it's not yet market ready. Um, so it's a prototype now. There should be some improvements. Um, now it's... Uh, like a second version of solutions ready to the occupants of the demonstration sites, but for the really market ready, we need another iteration. And of course, as I mentioned, it depends what are the needs and requirements of building occupants as of just whoever is our, uh, yeah, interested exploitation uh, player. Okay, so uh, there is another question for you. Perfect. Are all the people of your samples with a smartwatch? 
This could mean that your samples are a bit biased towards people, fans of ICT devices. No, no, no. So the connection with the really measuring the biological parameters uh, from people are only in one demonstration case. Also, that's also connected with the data privacy and user protection because you might know that uh, when collecting data directly from like through wearables, it's much more complicated. So this is done in the case of the Dutch case where we are doing the um, activities connected with Maastricht University who is experienced in um, yeah physiological response of the body. Um, so this is connected to the Movistyle Office app solution. Thank you. Uh, a question for utility project. So for Angelina, could this tool be used at an European level? If so, how is it personalized for each European country? Um, so uh, in a European level, it is already demonstrated, if I got the, the question correctly. So the yeah. personalization of the tool, um, first of all, is uh, at really a user level, as um, uh, there are machine learning techniques for extracting uh, personal comfort profiles and uh, activity profiles for each user and then uh, the different uh, business models um, adapt, adopted by the, the different um, utilities or energy retailers in general and so they, they have to be um, adjusted to each user's needs and therefore can be personalized to each European country or like um, customized, let's say, not personalized. Okay, thank you. Oh, so, sorry, either uh, involving, um, it, it could be by involving tariffs, uh, different tariffs and different legislations, uh, depending on how um, the utility it intends to apply these campaigns. Yeah. Um, I continue with a, with another question for eTeacher project for Gloria. Um, is it foreseen to be able to quantify in terms of cost savings the improvements made through the app? Uh, in terms of cost. Uh, uh, not uh, we are going to quantify in terms of um, 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 kilowatts hour uh, and CO2 and uh, right now cost is not priority. Okay. Um, I'll continue with another question. This is to feedback project and so to Patricia. Um, congratulations for a very interesting way to make the users learn using the current trend in apps. Have you already tested in a real environment? Has it been successful? Uh, hello, thank you for your question. Um, this uh, application is being tested at the moment in two demo areas. In Portugal, uh, at Inestec, that is a, um, a building with offices, so a services building. In Spain, we are testing the solution in public buildings and uh, we are going to test it in public buildings um, in a couple of weeks. And we are testing this at the moment in, the, um, in residentials in Germany. Um, the test started in a couple of months, so we don't have, we, can, we cannot tell you which is the impact of this application we hope that um, we can engage users towards energy efficiency, but it's too early to give you feedback um, re regarding the results. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, one final question, which is uh, directed to the in-between project. Um, so to Federica or Marco, um, how do you manage the personal data coming from the monitoring? You have talked about comparison between users. This means that the tool is devoted to an operation manager, but not to an individual user. 
Yeah, so it, it's Marco speaking, if, if you allow, Federica. So sure, please. The, when it comes to uh, personal data, we are strictly compliant with the GDPR in the sense that we, first of all, have acquired all the necessary consent forms from the end users. Secondly, we have performed the pseudo-anonymization of data before we have forwarded the data to the data processors. So currently, the only association between real physical persons and the, their data are actually managed by the uh, demo site responsibles in France. That's the company Villagia, who is actually the owner of this uh, social housing. So they are the owner of the apartments and they lease them to the end users and they actually have this uh, correlation. And in, in Austria, we have a Sonnenplatz who is demo site owner who also can also make this connection. So all the rest of the consortium is actually dealing with the pseudo anonymized data. And uh, finally, what we have also committed with the GDPR, and we actually experienced this situation two days ago, that we had one of the users actually requesting their data because we have actually committed to provide all monitored data from the end users to provide them uh, and to give them at their disposal at any time. So we have actually had uh, recently just uh, one such request and we made a dump of all the information that we have collected so far. So the, the end user is still willing to participate, but they, I think, just wanted to test uh, our ability to, to provide their data and we are happy to, we were happy to provide this information. And also, we also are committed to, to acknowledging their right to be forgotten in the terminology of GDPR. That means that in case they want to abandon the project or uh, actually stop being part of in-between platform, that we can always give them dump of, of their data and actually erase all the data related to, the, to this end user. So when it comes to uh, the second part and the, uh, the benchmarking service, it's actually the, the idea and the objective is actually the opposite. So that part is really targeting the end users. Uh, as you can, as you were able to see in the screenshot of the application, there are some even some pictures and names. So people are free to provide some real information if they want, or they can use some aliases instead. But uh, those are real, uh, let's say, end users from the from different apartments in, for example, in social housing in Villagia, and they are being compared among themselves. So different apartments are ranked according to their energy efficiency and performance. So they're the actual target of this, service, the real end users. Also, it, it can be used by some kind of energy managers or uh, any uh, person responsible of managing uh, entire buildings. Uh, but in, in that sense, uh, it, it, it is a bit different because this kind of social pressure, it's not so easy to conduct in non-residential buildings because you have multiple users uh, uh, using the, the same room with uh, uh, different requirements about the comfort, with different needs and so on. So uh, this uh, tool is actually not that much applicable on the, on the non-residential non users. So the, the answer would be, yes, we are targeting the end users. Okay, there's actually one more question for the in-between project. Mm -hmm. In which way are people engaging with the mobile app? Do you uh, do they find it user friendly? Yeah, so as I mentioned during the presentation, it uh, has been actually co developed with the end users. So, of course, the first release of the app was uh, rather rudimental because the application has been built from scratch during the project. So, we actually needed to, to jump a few TRL levels. Uh, over a very short period of time. So actually our uh, uh, demo site end users actually helped us a lot in increasing the ergonomy and user friendliness of the application. And uh, yes, we have received some initial feedback saying that the user interface is um, relatively easy to use and uh, basically uh, some of their uh, remarks has been already adopted and implemented within the app. Of course, we are working on improving further the application until the end of the project, but it has, it's now being actively used as, as a primary user interface of the project. Okay, thank you. So these are the end of the questions.
So I would like to thank you all for presenting this uh, very interesting project in ICT Solutions. And I also thank everyone who attended the webinar. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for the organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.